Greetings and welcome back. Let me switch on my overhead light. Boom! There we are. Get sort of the uh, weirdness going on. So we have a couple weird technical oddities going on here. Somebody say something quick. Hello. Hello. Hey, look at that. It worked. Um, <laughs> it's like the, so we jumped on. So if anybody wanted to jump on, um, we had to do a last minute change in the server because for whatever reason, the main Jitsi server is not working on my Jitsi application. It's yeah, giving us apparently the same thing that Ashton always deals with. Um, no, I only get it whenever I try to, whenever I disconnect. Okay, when it you never disconnect, happened when I, I tried to connect. Yeah, I could not get it to run except on a web browser, but my OBS is not set up to use a web browser, and I did not have the time to switch it over. So um, there we go. And then we just literally seconds before we went live, I cranked on the, uh, cranked up the volume, moved things over, and I was hoping that did not mess stuff up, and so I'm just doing uh, audio adjustments on my end. Alright, I think we're all good now, so if you are wanting to jump on the stream link that I sent in the supporter systems is no longer valid, just go back through the past ones, um, and uh, it's going to be the same link as we've had in the past before um, on my private server. Um, so, but hey, as long as we don't have like 15 people on here we should be able to run with two or three um yeah. extras so uh there we have it but um let's go ahead and bring people on how's it going ashton i exist you, ashton exists that's good awesome i did not check my uh adjustments here all right dan how's it going your way i'm drifting between galaxies drifting between galaxies all right uh yeah. Salbu must be he must have got top stuck in a time warp because i haven't seen him jump on yet so um i did send him a notice over there directly on uh on matrix so uh Salbu, if you jump well, you on, know it's the matrix. middle of the night for him where he's it, at it is it is but he, may, he didn't set his alarm clock yeah sometimes he just goes to sleep and wakes up for the show so if you get to Andromeda, tell me what it's like. I want to plan a vacation there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and check in on our comments. Commodore fan says, hello. Just got a portable AC out. Hose out the window for the game room for the summer. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's hot in It's hot in the van right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, it's tomorrow it's going to be up to 82. But fortunately, around 4 or 5 o'clock, we're going to start seeing some clouds come in. So I'll get full batteries in the morning. And then it'll be cloudy and be able to cool down for the weekly news roundup, which will be fun. Uh, no Christian show tonight, if you follow the Christian stuff. Um, I just did not have time. I have a pa massive pile of client work that's been piling up. So I just said, you know what, I'm just going to sit down. Got one of them completely knocked off. I got most of the other one done. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing. And then I'm just going to keep on doing that for a little bit. And, yeah, we finished a book anyway. And uh, I only have like one or two weeks of uh, backup notes. So... We're going to wait a little bit before we jump back into uh, the Thursday night shows on the Christian stuff. But I'll let you know when we're back over there. Um, newsletter is going to go out um, because I did actually finally get copies of the new book, uh, the new Christian book. I had put it out in when, November or something and had not seen a copy yet. And I just got copies of it in on, on uh, Tuesday. So they look great. So I will be doing a coupon code on my mailing list on the Christian stuff. So more about that later if you guys want um let's see uh let's see uh greetings moon base of grays how are you doing dakota rustler no wife simpler life uh oh uh was somebody having to say something about, oh yes connor fan letting her make that decision they say happy wife happy life there you go yeah no wife simpler life there you go die master hello since when did java get so furry i know right he got moldy um <laughs> I think my T-Mobile this week trying to reroute my IP to Louisiana and sell that. Don't let your T-Mobile reroute to Louisiana. You won't be able to watch the bad stuff on the internet. <laughs> Hello, Jay Mills. Yes, T-Mobile wants you wants everyone to think you're from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T-Mobile's rooting everyone through Louisiana so they can they don't have to uh, pass pass that filth through their network, right? <laughs> Which is weird because, uh, at least in the area that I live in, T-Mobile has crap connection. <laughs> oh, uh, very it's interesting. Not that great right. here I got either. eight over there on YouTube. Wow, we are like getting completely throttled. We have uh, fourteen over on Odyssey. At least people on Odyssey 10. are back. Skittles says hello, hello, or eight. Did you say eight? No, I said hello. That's close enough. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah YouTube and... governors at work. Yeah, YouTube governor. <laughs> 
Uh, didn't work for you like the person posting cute cats earlier. Uh, we got uh, over on Rumble. We got six watching on Rumble. Let's get ready to Rumble. Hello, Lenny. The Rumbly Boys. Uh, Rumble also has had chat before a live stream. Epic. Um, yeah, I I don't see the see the chat that happened before then, but uh, cool. Someone say something if the audio on the live stream is weird because I have it muted to not conflict with the Jitsi call. All right. Uh, we got, uh, one over there watching on the, uh, on Twitch. Uh, okay. hey, my brother's over there streaming on Twitch right now, doing some video game 3D modeling stuff over there on, uh, on Twitch, if you're into that kind of Ooh. stuff. Um, if you still stream when we're done, I want to go see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's, uh, Mavis Games, so, uh, good luck to him over there. All right, um, he's much bigger on Twitch than I am, um, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of a backup. Can I see how many he's got? Yeah, he's got 13 watching? viewers right now. He's doing asset creation of hoverboards, part 11, with Mabus Games, software and game development. Very good. Awesome. Uh, that's on Twitch, if you follow Twitch. My brother is Mabus Games. If you want to see the miracle of uh, environmental uh, studies, we have the same genetics, and we are 100% opposites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he boy. literally is over there like uh uh i guess they call it bob ross in it i guess got the long crazy hair looks like a psychopath he's a really nice guy he just looks like a psychopath um but uh oh we are so different he's kind of crazy how's it going ivan not bad how about you oh not Wait. too bad All right. I have a lemon ginger tea with honey today. It tastes yummy. Um, and we, let's go ahead and get diving on into our topic. Um, did I mess up? Uh, what is this? That's Libre Wolf. I don't need Libre Wolf up there. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and jump on over. So uh, this actually came out of the um, uh, a new law just passed in. Iowa and uh, January 1st, 2025, which by the way, Dan, isn't that that far away. Uh, companies have two years to get in compliance, just under two years. Um, so, uh, and then there were six. This is the sixth state that passes privacy laws. Connecticut, Utah, Virginia, Colorado, and California come before it. And none of these are what I would actually consider privacy laws. They are all very pro-business. They are all kind of annoying and um you know that's that so uh we're gonna go ahead and chat about these and the limitations therein again um so with that uh anyone want to jump in with any initial thoughts before we get going or should i just kind of jump in here the was it iowa privacy law uh, it, it it's very incomplete from what i can tell mm -hmm. It is yeah, it, critical things. It does carry a lot of the things from some of the other laws. It's like they've they've sifted through the other ones and copy pasted, and they might have forgotten a page, forgotten to copy and paste the page into their. Law. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. like they, they forgot the most important page too. Uh, yeah, well, which which page was that one? Which was the most important in your thoughts? Uh, it was page. Uh... <laughs> Page seven, the one about not sharing data. One of the fun things is you can request they delete your data as long as it wasn't data about you they bought from somewhere else. Yeah, yes, if they got that it is from actually you, in there. They have to delete it if they got it from someone else. They don't have to. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, we didn't get that from him. No, they supplied it through Google and we got it from Google. Therefore, that, third that party. just encourages data, data brokers. It does. And that's a big problem is that none of these laws deal with data brokers and data brokers are the actual legitimate problem that we have. Any data that you got from anywhere about a particular person, if they say delete, just forget that I exist. You need to forget that they exist, except for the part where they told you to forget. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. Anyone else want to jump in before I dive into here? No, go for it. All right, we'll dive in. All right, so on March 29, or 29, March 2023, where are these guys from, like Europe? 
Uh, no, they're from this country, but uh, Iowa became the sixth state to pass a comprehensive data line. The Iowa Consumer Data Privacy Act, IDCPA, That's will go into effect January, uh, excuse me, 1 January 2025. Got to stay up with those European dating systems. Um, while there are still some familiar elements to other state laws that came before it, the law is most similar to the one enacted in Utah. Uh, so they copy and paste it mostly from Utah. What are the key things for businesses to do if they are already CCPA compliant? This is the California. So we have the IDCPA. We have the CCPA. We have the, I think it's UDCP. I don't know. We, we're going to get so many three-letter acronyms over here. We may as well be eating alphabet soup. All right. Or or members of, uh, of a, a uh, certain movement. Um, we'll leave it at that. So um, um, let's see, Kagan and Naturi from Fox Rothschild LLP provide an overview of some of the provisions that needs to be considered in order to comply with the law. All right, so here is the applicability and risks. Does it apply? It applies under two conditions. First is you control or process personal data of at least 100,000 Iowa consumers, or B, if you derive more than 50% of your gross revenue from the sale of personal and control or, pos or process personal data of at least 25,000 Iowa customers, making it and having no revenue component, where some other ones are like, you have to have a, you know, if you got to make $100,000 off of, you you know, Iowa people. None of that. It's just 50% of your revenue or 100,000 uh, people. And uh, any co data collection holding at all for anybody with those, which, by the way, includes, do you have a Google Analytics account? Do you run a Facebook page? Because all of those are tangible gentle third-party associations with your particular business so those as long can also be like split off into separate uh entities or businesses as well to reduce the size requirements mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um that that is a question um that might be tested against the law and say well you're kind of the same overall master company but of course companies have the ability to split themselves into infinite little divisions and share data uh, back and forth. Basically, it's like partitioning a hard drive, right? Eh, I don't want yeah. to have uh, one gigabyte with uh, 40 terabytes. Let's just have 40 things with one terabyte, you know. Um, so notably, unlike California, Utah, there is no revenue threshold. So what are the risks? Well, $7,500 fine per violation. After, of course, you get one free, uh, one free alert and you have 90 days to cure it. So if they spot you, you're caught, you have a written notice, you have 90 days to cure it. If you fail to do that, it's $7,500 fine per violation paid into the Iowa's Consumer Education and Litigation Funds. If you're a big enough company, that's pocket change. Yeah, yeah. It's like, eh, what's the risk? It's kind of like Facebook. Eh, you're just going to pay what's us the uh, risk? five if million you're dollars. Enough, sure. <laughs> five million dollars. Why not? You know. All right. Well, you so, know, if it's per person, that can add up real fast. Yeah, yeah it's not if per got person. Like 10,000 people in your server and all their well, data. Well, okay. This is it's a question. Fine violation. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good point, Dan, because if you'll remember uh, the White Castle lawsuit in Illinois, it was literally per person. The per violation meant per person, and they were looking at like a billion dollars in fines. Mm -hmm. um, yikes. I hope you didn't like White Castle cheeseburgers. You may never eat one again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so here are the things to do. These are kind of your basics. Establish a process to address customer requests. So customers like, Hey, what day do you have on me? You better have a, a process. Don't be like, um, I dare I say it. Don't be like rumble and your emails go into the ether, <laughs> which rumbles emails go into the ether. I've emailed them several times. I never heard back from anyone at rumble. So, uh, rumble, I want to like you, but Please give me the reasons to like you. Um, <laughs> so, 
Um, with that, uh, map your, let's see, map your information where it's held and by whom. So you have to know where your information is, who has access to it, assess whether you engage in targeted advertising. So there is a definition of targeted advertising. You have to assess whether you engage in such advertising, which is not illegal. It's just has to be an informed consent, basically not opt in, but informed consent. You have to say, Hey, we're targeting you. Um, so establish methods for consi uh, submitting consumer requests. This will be a fun one. How do you automate this? Because uh, as uh, one of my uh, clients found out this morning at 8 a.m. when I started getting text messages, AI figured out how to get past our honeypot uh, our honeypot uh, anti spam stuff. So what? we were getting we were getting multiple spams out of a Russian server. Um, I'm not sure if it was. AI or if it was actual bots or like actual human beings in a link farm uh, because that can get around our system but I pulled my server logs and everything was coming from the same exact IP so yeah we just blocked a bunch of Russians from my website I hope they weren't looking for our products uh <laughs> <laughs> of course we want to sell to them anyway we might get sanctioned um so um, you, you do have to have a way to establish consumer requests. Um, probably, you know, send me a letter. Uh, establish a process for authenticating and verifying the identity of the requester. Uh, establish a process for ensuring the requests are handled and responded to on time. And establish a process to ensure that you are not discriminating slash re uh, retaliating against a consumer for having exercised their rights. I feel like there um, needs yeah. to be like reasonable assumptions that these processes have to be, you know, easy for a or for a consumer to go through. Like, if you want to make a mm -hmm. request, it should be easy to do so. You shouldn't have to because a lot of this stuff is online. So you, there should be an online process. Mm -hmm. You should not have to mail anything. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Um. So yeah, that's. Uh, I, I would love to have a form, but. Yeah, not going to happen in our current world. If, if AI can get on there and spam my contact form, that's uh, no thank you. All right. Uh, so what does it say? Similar to the California Act and Virginia's Act, the Colorado Act and the Utah Act and the IDCPA grants individuals rights and the personal information collected about them. This includes the right to know what information it is, get a copy in a portable format and have the information deleted. Okay. Yeah, the bare minimum. Um, so th they can say, hey, what do you got? And they can force you to delete it. Unlike the CPRA, but in line with the UPCA, alphabet soup here. Somebody get me some, uh, some uh, ABC123 soup here. Uh, yeah, the really proposed really. amendments gives consumers yeah, the right to delete up. personal <laughs> data provided to the controller, but not all personal data they has obtained about the consumer. There is your big gaping uh, earthquake-sized hole. Yes, you have to delete all the data that the consumer gave you at their request, but not the data that they have collected about you at their request. So really, this is a bunch though, of nonsense. Really, the information that was provided by the consumer should be all you have. Mm-hmm. That's not the world we live in. No, no, no. That's kind of why System 1 actually has a scarier privacy policy than Google. Like, they actually say in there, yes, we're going to buy information to augment the profile we have on you so we can target you better with ads. Uh, no. I think we should have anti-stalking laws to cover that kind of stuff. All right. Um, so, or, or uh, you want to buy my personal data? You got to give me a cut. Eh, a million bucks is fine. Sure, for a million bucks, you can have my data. That you're not going to be able to target ads to me because I'll use an ad blocker. But I agree um, with that. If you want someone's data, you have to go to them. Yeah, or, or tie them into a cut. There you go. IDCPA uh, also includes the right to opt out of the sale of personal information, which is more narrowly defined. Uh, which one's the ID? Are we on? Uh, yeah, we are on the Idaho. Wait. My Lord. Too many acronyms. I, I, I know. <laughs> Okay, I think that's a typo. I, I think that should be the ICDPA, not the IDCPA. I'm pretty sure this one's a typo. So it does include the right to opt out of the sale of personal information, which is narrowly defined by the CPRA, as defined below. Unlike Colorado, Connecticut, Virginia, and Utah, Iowa's consumer opt-out rights do not apply to pseudonymous data. So any if data that's not directly. And it, uh, it doesn't apply to anonymized data, basically. 
another giant hole. So it does not provide the rights to correct personal data, to not be subject to fully, fully automated decisions or to opt out of certain processing. So uh, analyzing that sentence there. It does not provide the right to correct data. So if somebody has wrong data about you and you they keep on sending right. you tampon ads and you're clearly not a woman, although nobody could define that term, um, <laughs> you don't have a way to actually correct them and say, excuse me, I do not uh, stuff tampons up my rear end. <laughs> I don't need these things. <laughs> All right. Uh, no right to correct data. So if they get it wrong, it's wrong. This could actually be a good thing in that you can obfuscate the data really bad. Bad. I'll have to Why learn how to say that word. Purposefully somebody. giving right. the wrong information. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, the second thing, um, it does not provide the rights to subject uh, to not be subject to fully automated decisions. So, in other words, AI can be used with your data. So, uh, in this current good. world where some states are trying to say, no, we do not want AI only decisions here, they're saying, ah, we don't care if the AI makes the decision based on the data they have. There so basically, um, the data's wrong. It says you're 20 years older than you are, and the AI decides that you need to be marching to the death camp, and you're only 45. And we got a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, and it does not provide the ability to opt out of certain processing, such as for target advertising. So I cannot say, yeah, you're not allowed to target advertising. Nah, no, no permissions for that. You don't have that. So is this really a privacy data? A lot? It's not. This is not a privacy data lot at all. All it, this is is an informed consent. Um, not even informed consent. An informed we're screwing you law. That's all this crap is. It's like we're, that right to repair law passed in New York State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that that one might actually have less teeth than this. I'm not sure. No explicit right to opt out of targeted individual, targeted advertising. Like, once again, like, why are we looking well, at advertising as being the ultimate boogeyman? It's not. Yeah, either way, both this law and the New York right to repair law, they're useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are they going to figure out with advertising that people just don't have no more money left to even do anything with the ads, you know? Well, well d don't worry, because starting May 1st, if you have a bad credit score, you're going to get better interest rates. Um, yeah, I, and more I've been seeing loans. that all day long on Isn't news that channels. exciting? Yeah, go. If you have that really good out. credit, you're gonna get hammered to buy a house. Yeah, well, there, there you go. That's, what if I can't that, afford get, it? If you're a bum and you don't pay your bills on time and you got a few bankruptcies, you'll get a house with almost no interest rate. I uh, that sounds great to me. But hey, at least they won't be targeting it. Well, they probably will be because <laughs> only if I can get a tiny house. That's all I need. <laughs> Uh, well, here's another problem about the tiny houses, of course. They're actually illegal, uh, according to most uh, jurisdictions. Unless you put like it on Louisiana, wheels. Louisiana, sadly. Yeah, which, which is hilarious because, you know, I built, basically, I built my tiny home here for, um, I built my tiny home here for almost, what, maybe $15,000 inside my van. Um, has everything I need. Um, I could spend more in plumbing if I, you know, want to do a little bit better, but whatever. Uh, why is there a ton of chat about the IRS in the chat room? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Wait, we'll get there later. They, there's Wait a whistleblower that uh, is blowing the whistle on the Bidens. Oh, okay. Cool. Question, what chat? Which chat? Uh, YouTube chat. Okay, I'm going to find... Not a lot going on in the other chats. Is Odyssey chat dead again? I haven't seen anybody else uh, chat for like 30 minutes. Um, I'll, I'll refresh that when I get back to chats here. Um, IDCPA has carved out that a controller or processor is not required to respond to requests when the controller is not reasonably capable of associating the requests um, with the personal data or be unreasonably burdensome to do so. So in other words, hey, all of our data is anonymized. We don't know who you are, but you can prove who you are. And they were like, we can't prove who you are because our data is anonymized. Basically, this gives them a cop out to not do anything with this law. Unless they are screwing up and actually collecting names and social security numbers and IP addresses um, and emails. If you're collecting those, you have a way out. But if they're not, they have a way out of uh, anything. So there's a back door in here, meaning that this law is completely incompetent and totally useless. Uh, any other commentary before we get into the next portion? And this so law far, passed? This, 
so far this looks like just something that somebody handed to, to someone else say hey stay busy and write this up somehow so we can sell it yeah there you go there you go uh, it feels like lobbyists were intervening with this <laughs> i probably i would um, all right. So establish and maintain reasonable administrative, technical and physical data security policies. Uh, this will be difficult if you're hiring out to the lowest uh, common denominator. But if you are, you just blame them for any leaks. Um, so you need to implement reasonable administrative, technical, physical uh, data. So implementing information security measures. Uh, depending on the size, scope, and complexity, you may want to align your policies with the National Institutes of Standards and Technology Cyber Framework uh, or the Center of Internet Security's Top 20 Security Controls. Uh, ensure you follow recent enforcement actions as far as case law, FTC enforcement, and document your security measures and assess them regularly. Um, or just don't collect data. <laughs> eh, but nobody wants to not collect data. All right. Adopt, improve, and expand privacy notices. Develop and implement a reasonably accessible, clear, and meaningful privacy notice, which addresses all of your relevant processes. In other words, it's not about a privacy protection law. It's just, hey, we're going to tell you all the crap we're doing. Um, as yeah. long as you don't leave anything out, you're fine. You're cool. Yeah, because who reads the privacy policy, really? <laughs> it's not a matter of who reads it or not. It's the fact that the the law has the ability to say, hey, you're not allowed to do data broking. You're not allowed to share a bunch of data. You're not allowed to collect this type of data. You're not allowed to collect anything beyond what you need for your service. But they don't. Okay. The, no, no. Let's be balanced about this, okay? It's they could do that. They don't want to do that because there's too much business to be lost in the buying and selling of data. All they want is a law in the books that says, hey, we're doing this. Is there anything I can do about it? No, but it's the law. And that's the stupid part about it all. You know? So the privacy notice should include the categories of information, the purpose, how to exercise consumer rights. So notice there's nothing in here about not collecting unnecessary data. This gives any company in Iowa any ability to collect any amount of data that they want. All they have to do is say they're doing it. Um, which is, of course, another um, another big goal. Implement data processing agreement. The need to implement a data processing with each processor that handles personal information. You should uh, the agreement should include clear instructions for processing, the nature, type of data, duration, the rights and obligations, the process of retention, deletion, or return, and access of subcontractor accountability. <laughs> I.e., there is none. The obligation on processors, personal and subprocessors, to be bound by a duty of confidentiality. The obligation uh, binding processor by the same obligations. The obligation on the processor to make available to the controller all information its process is necessary. The obligation requiring processor to contractually bind its subprocessors to all the same terms. All right. So, again, nothing in there about what you can't collect. Just telling people what you are collecting. How to identify it, you must ensure that you provide clear notice and opt out. And if the data is of a known child, process it in according to COPA. So that's all it says about personal data. Sensitive data. Provide a notice. They do have an opt out. It should be a written opt in, but anyway. We have adopting a process. Anything before we jump on to the next part? I'm assuming that this particular bill only or law only operates within the borders of Iowa. It only border. Yeah, it's only. Uh, so it's, if you're outside this, the, 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 the boundaries of board of Iowa and you're conducting this data gathering business and stuff like that, there's little that they can do to you. Right. Uh, correct. So it, it triggers into effect for any Iowa residents that are interacting with the business if it meets those requirements of 100,000 Iowa people or 25,000 Iowa people and 50% of gross revenue from Iowa people. So, but one of the challenges, one of the challenges that we get, though, is that um, the 
the fact that uh, wait, where was I going? My train of thought has derailed, like East Palestine. Um, <laughs> um, so one of the problems we have here is that as these state laws come into effect, the companies have to adjust for it, and so they have to develop a policy that's going to match inside of all of the different regulations. So that is, I think, what the what the issue is going to be. All right, so um, adopt a process for de-identified data and synonymous data. So they make a distinction between the two with respect to synonymous data. Additional information to reassociate the data with a natural person must be kept separately and subject to appropriate technical and organizational measures to prevent re-identification. So this is your anonymized data. Notably, the consumer rights under ICDPA do not apply to synonymous data in cases where the controller is able to demonstrate that it meets the above criteria regarding de-identified data. The controller should take re uh, reasonable steps to ensure that it cannot reasonably be linked to an identified or identifiable natural person. So explicit, you have to make sure that there's not an easy way to relink. The problem is most data can be relinked. Uh, so if you are a data processor, adopt a process to facilitate, excuse me, the controller's obligations. Adopt a process to assist the controller with responding regarding consumer rights. Is information readily available to provide information? Adopt information security measures. And then uh, there's um, some slight changes for IDCPA for when you already have CCPA and CPRA. <sighs> Commentary. I, I I find this to be a big waste of money to put together. Agree. You know, first of all, it's just one state in conjunction with a couple other states that made the same kind of law that only the law works within the borders of that state. Yeah. When yeah. in reality, what you really need is a national opt out system where you can go to the a registry and register to opt out at any data collection and be done with it, rather than everything you've got to do or, or download, buy, or whatever, do a manual opt out, you know. Yeah, or, or better. Or you got to make things in. opt in. Yeah. yeah. Opt in is always better than opt out. People don't have an attention span to read every uh, contract for opting out of something that's presented to them. It's a big hassle. Mm -hmm. But if they had a database where they could go to and just opt out of data collection, you know, within the grounds of some, uh, you know, stipulations, you know, that would be a more fair way to play the game. Yeah. Ooh, Other than, like you know, challenge. it's like it's like if you have a pistol and you're traveling from state to state some states have different laws for carrying a pistol than others you know yes and it's very annoying to have to know what the laws are in the state as i'm driving through them right <laughs> so you, you know what you know what i'm getting at yeah yeah and that's kind of where the companies fall uh find themselves in right now is they really have to fight with the fact that there's all these different laws and how do you get in compliance with um with all of them at the same time and that's kind of what the next step has to do so kind of unifying these together, ensure your CPRA rights and processes apply to the Iowa residents. You need to update your privacy notices that reflect the rights applicable to Iowa residents. Iowa residents do not have all the same rights as California, but it may be easier for a business operationally use the same rights and process data across the board. That's what we we're getting at. Once one of these things passes, this is why we have to be so careful and why Signal and WhatsApp are teaming up against UK about their backdoor security is because if UK passes a backdoor security causing the weakening of, uh, of the encryption, WhatsApp and Signal, they have to either completely pull out of the UK or weaken their product for everybody around the world. There is no other option. And so a company can either stop doing business in California, Iowa, Colorado, Massachusetts, or they can develop one plan to use all of them. And that's really why we have to be careful. And this is one of those cases where it, it might merit, a federal law might actually be a better merit than 
uh, having every state having its own laws. Whereas yeah, in it, most instances, every state having its own laws is usually the better way to go. Let the state do its thing. This is a case where one central federal law would actually make sense. One yeah, law but other state in other states, right. you know, you, that have the same a similar law. Let's say the the stip the the internal guts of it and the limits and all that may be different from one state to the next state. And the laws are not really compatible due to having, you know, in, let's say um, um, a fine of seventy five hundred dollars, where another state has a fine of. Ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You know, little things like that that differ from one state to the other, and some states have stuff redacted, and other states have additional junk thrown in. Yep, it, it's it's one it's, it's one alphabet soup. Yep, A, B, C, and that's where e, you know, and that's where a, a federal standard would be more likely to be a better idea for the average person to understand. Yeah, and the only saving grace is that. The companies that these apply to in general are big enough to have big lawyers to understand how to read everything. Um, you know, so this, this junk where you buy something or you download Windows or whatever it case, and, and, and you know, by read by by read reading installing or using the thing, you automatically opt in for all its garbage. That's garbage. Mm-hmm. That's why we use Linux. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> That's that's a reason. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and check in on our comment. Any final thoughts? Um, basically, the final step is just to go in and you know, make sure you're compliant with everything. But any final thoughts before we get into comments? I think I vented my hot air. All right. I'm trying to see uh, if I have any hot air left. <clears throat> let's see. So it does look, appear as though a refresh fixed the Odyssey comments. Greetings, mortals. Uh, man, Disney really is reaching with these remakes. Yeah, which remakes are you talking about? Yeah, Hello, you Baltimore Tool in the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, greetings from a different multiverse universe. All right, Road Vagabond. Uh, greetings from Butter OS. There you go. Butter. Greetings all. Did you butter, butter your OS today? Uh, I have not buttered my OS today. Drifting I, I, between upgrades, Kubuntu 2304, good so far. Yeah, the um, the new Ubuntu's dropped, so uh, I am going to download uh, the Cinnamon version and have a look at it, as I had promised to do when we had the Cinnamon announcement. Been using K for 10 years, drives my 4K monitors, great, there you go. Anchorage, uh, the Anchorage uh, took off, I might, might have had something going on, so... CPRA, acronym for crap, there you go, right? <laughs> Uh, Hawksploit, uh, besides Rumble is technically along the same proprietary frameworks like mainstream GooTube resources, and they are prone to the same censorship, albeit not for their current level yet. Yeah, well, they did tell France to go pound it, so they are banned in France because of that. Uh, I love the American system is based on informing you that we already have these powers. I know, right? Uh, look at that kitty on a skateboard. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Legalize Obama had power to uh, off the American citizens anywhere on the planet. They argued he already had them and were just putting them into the letter. Yep, there you go. I'm the cat food. gifts are back. Oh, it's a kitty. <sighs> All right, I think you have to upgrade to pay uh, to pay premium to display images. That is a possibility. Uh, since Odyssey Premium is much cheaper than the badge of, uh, stupidity, a.k.a. Twitter Blue. Uh, I mean, DeviantArt Core, I mean, Furnated Plus, I mean, Discord Nitro. Oh, Lord. Um. Yeah, everything seems to have its paid premium plan lately. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. A lot of states enacting these laws to bypass corporate takeover federal government. Arkansas, Missouri, gold and silver are now... Legal non-taxable currency, along with other states on the bandwagon. Nice. Uh, I was talking about Star Wars cat pick at the beginning of the video. Yep. I heard a mention of Butter OS. Just came back. Uh, yes. Um, let's see. As for the states, boomy, boomy things. If only there's a federal document saying something like, the right of the people to keep and bear boomy, boomy shall not be in French. I know, right? Why is this complicated? 
Yeah, what do they not understand by shall not infringe? Somehow they can't get past that. Well, these are people, though, so stupid they don't know what sex they are by what's in their pants. So right. we can't, you know, we can't give them that much credit, you know. Um, I must be late again. Yeah, I was a little bit late getting here. Um, might bankrupt my Iowa relations. Uh-oh. Uh, I don't want the country turning into Chicago or worse, Detroit. I don't know what's worse, Chicago or Detroit. Dan, what do you think? I think they're equal. I don't know. I've never been to Chicago. Do you want to go check it out? I know Detroit <laughs> in the downtown area is kind of built up a little bit where they've got new sports arenas and stuff like that. And, Who you know, a lot of upper class people live in downtown Detroit. But you get out in the suburbs where the houses are all starting to fall down and stuff like that. And the city's got a takedown program for every block. Yeah. Uh, oh boy! So C Ford to leave the mistake. National sales tax would be over twenty percent, and I'd be instantly poor. You know, if you had a national sales tax and eliminated all other tax, I um twenty percent is pretty high, but it would be a better thing because if you just don't buy anything, you just don't pay taxes. Think of that: you grow your own food, you don't have to pay taxes on the food you eat. If you, you know, you, you buy your property, no more sale, no more property tax, but you might have to pay a tax on the house itself. Well, here's you one. Know? I take in a certain amount of money per year mm -hmm. and I don't go over that. So I never have to file an, an, an IRS claim. Yeah. I never have to, have to file a return because I don't go over the, the, the minimum mark. Yeah. Should be a flat sales tax. Do away with 90% of the IRS. Just leave the minimal staff to make sure businesses are correct reporting sales tax. Yep. Uh, sales tax at 5%. I don't think you can run the country with a sales tax of 5% at most. I, I think you need more than that. But not a lot more. And and here's the other thing that a, that a straight flat tax would do. The rich who spend more money would pay more taxes. Isn't that if exactly you got what rid you're of all these three letter agencies that they keep building and adding and putting into the government, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, so roads are expensive to fix. Bridges are expensive to fix. You know, I want to give enough enough grace to that. But yeah, at the same time, you know, the, our current tax system is an absolute joke. And, you know, rich don't have to like they do pay a lot more in tax than than, you know, people say they do. But they don't pay millions and millions and millions every year because their money isn't cash money that they're making it's valuation based upon untraded stocks which they don't have to pay taxes on you only have to pay taxes on it when on the year you withdraw it so if they want to buy a new yacht and you have a flat tax guess what they're paying a lot of money on sales tax on that yacht so if they don't want to pay as much tax you just don't buy as much it is the best solution for everything because if you want to pay less taxes you just become less of a consumer period or figure out how to make stuff on your own mm-hmm um, Learn in Kentucky and Tennessee yacht. are some of them states that don't have a sales tax. But they don't have well, an Tennessee income tax. has a high sales tax, but they don't have state they don't have income tax. tax. But yeah, there yeah. is no like federal sales tax. All sales tax is like state and local, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like I know where I live, like the total sales tax is like nine point four five percent. There's five percent state, four point two. Was it two five? <laughs> Four point. My brain just completely short circuited on math. <laughs> my sales tax here is um, is uh, six percent. It used to be four percent, like a few decades ago. But you know they yeah. had to get greedy. Yeah. One time they tried raising it to ten percent, and then it immediately went back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Razi paid two straight years six hundred sixty six dollars. That's just evil. Um, pay a couple times when I was working two jobs and working some days, 16, 18 hours a day, trying to catch up on medical bills, got ahead. Yeah, no sharing beyond opt-in, not difficult if lobbyists disappear. Yeah, yeah. We need to have a single national opt-in. No company can collect any more data than is explicitly necessary for what they need to provide the service they have, period. And also ban lobbying. Yeah. 
And if you want to give more data, hey, opt in. Like, I want to see the, I want to see headphone reviews every time I go on the internet. Sure, you can opt into that, and then you know you'll figure out what headphones you want, and then you'll buy the ones you want, and then you can be like, all right, stop talking, tell me about headphones because I don't care anymore. But it's like you go out, you review headphones, so you watch a few videos, you go out, you buy your headphones, and you're seeing nothing but headphone reviews for the next ad infinity. I mean, you already bought your headphones; it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like you already bought the thing. Why are they showing you more ads telling you to buy the thing that you already have? <laughs> also, I might as well. Actually, I did. Well, Dan just disappeared into the ether. Dan, where are you going? D Dan just disappeared. <laughs> well, instead of buying new headphones, I found on Amazon you can get new headphone cushions for your ears. Ooh, nice. They. they they are replaceable, books. but you got to kind of work them off because they're, they're double double back tape sticky down. So you got to take a small screwdriver and a plastic wedgie and slowly work the old ones off and clean the glue, glue off with uh, some rubbing alcohol. Mm. They're not expensive either. It's like 14 R bucks for, you know, to repair a $200. Razzie's Realm is made between Rock Springs and Lander. I've actually lived in one of those two towns. Um don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Lander's the better of those two. Um, gas, cigarettes, and booze is tax on tax on tax on tax. Yes, indeed. Too much tax. Uh, yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, greetings, Joe. How's it going? Uh, we just started investing in an SEP, self-employment pension this year. Structure more like a Roth IRA. Certainly helped out. Yeah, yeah. Self-employment tax is another thing that completely destroys small businesses, which is hilarious because it literally... You pay the self-employment tax up to $100,000 and you don't have to pay it. What? You should have to not pay it up to that because you're actually contributing to society. And then after you get a certain amount, okay, now you got a lot of money. I get that you, uh, you've worked for it, but okay, you can afford a little bit more possibly. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's, it should start out as a lower percent. And then like as you get more money, it goes up. That's how it should work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. We got some some more kitty images on the Odyssey chat. Uh, let's see. Love Missouri, my best state. Spend the drive through for a while. Uh, national sales tax would apply equally to grifters. There you go. Taxes. Ran into a glitch and had to file an extension. Getting 10 different answers from CPAs. They don't know what the tax code. <laughs> Not surprised. You know, my my CPA is good. Sales tax sounds like a good idea up front, you know, especially if you're thinking about a national sales tax. But when you go to buy a house and a car, that becomes a real problem. Well, I mean, we could do exceptions for large things, have a different tax rate on large things. Because in most places, yeah, you still have to pay sales tax on a car. I don't know about a house. I think you do on a house as well. Um, yeah, there's taxes on purchasing a house. At least here there is. Um, yeah, what software am I using for the stream? I am using OBS on the computer end, and I have a dedicated um, I have a dedicated uh, Linode setup for restreaming to all the different streams. Uh, Dan, if you're not on the Odyssey chat, you need to go check out the the kitties on the the turntables. <laughs> I'd put, I, I want to pull it up, but at the same time, I don't feel like it. <laughs> oh, come on. We have an animated GIF of kitties on record players, man. You got to see okay, it. Okay, Odyssey. It's epic. Everyone's got to go subscribe oh. to uh, to Odyssey now because we have kitties on turntables. Since when did they start putting GIFs in the comments section? I think it rolled out last week because we started seeing them on the, uh, on the live chat last week. Yeah, Just I find it annoying. Down. What email address did I use? Do you need an email address? You should just be able to no, pop in and look uh, at the comments. I have it set up to where it automatically logs me out whenever I close the web browser. Mm -hmm. And I forgot what email address I used. I don't know. Maybe it's I'm just a cranky like old kitties. man. Yep. All right. Um, any other thoughts and commentary on the U.S. privacy laws? It's a Let's, mess. Yeah, we will wrap up a little bit early here, which is good because I have more work I can do. Um, so, with that, uh, weekly news roundup tomorrow. No Christian stream. 
uh, or uh, video tonight. We'll be back with that stuff on Monday. Whoa! Um, weekly news roundup. Uh, weekly news roundup over here tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel. Oh my God! So, there's a cat on a laptop. <laughs> yes, there is a cat on a laptop. Oh my God! I he's love uh, all he's this. over there naming volcanoes. <laughs> Salty right. crackers chat had gifts forever. Eh, maybe it's just uh, maybe we just haven't Is had that anybody with paid off. Adding them or people putting them in. You got a cat on a turn. Uh, it's, it's it's people. It's people putting them in. All right. Um. Yeah. There is no real privacy law. That is true. All right, guys. We're gonna the wrap privacy this law one was up a here. Lie. <laughs> Uh, we're going to wrap this one up here, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for the weekly news roundup. Y'all have Peace, an awesome everyone. day. Y'all have an awesome day. And remember, the privacy law is a lie. <laughs> nah, there is no privacy in that law, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah.